So you see my clickbait thumbnail and you've clicked on the video, start revising now, mind blown, it's only August. Start revising now then? Yes, that's the end of the video. Start revising now, that's the end of the video. Please like and subscribe, thanks for watching, see you in the next video. Oof! Hold on a minute. Why? It's still August, surely it's still summer out there and it feels like a few weeks since I broke up. Well, if you live in the part of the world that I do, you might be going to school within a couple of weeks. I'm back at work, back in school next week. So yes, we are still, we are very much thinking about the next academic year. We're starting to think about our goals and our priorities. So absolutely, even though it's August, we're nearly, sadly, we're nearly at that time of year when we start going back to school. It's going to start thinking about that. I know it's not something you want to think about now. You should be starting to prepare for that. So why then? We'll get into good habits early on. Create a revision schedule. Do it now. Little and often, 20 minute blocks. I recommend in your revision schedule, you choose 20 minute blocks. You create 20 minute blocks with five minute breaks between that. Now it might be that you plan your revision for the morning if you're a morning person, or it might be that you plan it for the evening. So you come home and perhaps do three 20 minute blocks with five minute gaps between them. That might be the best way for you. But little and often is the key. I would not sit down for hour upon hour and just read through textbooks. I've talked in many, many videos about that, about not doing that. That isn't the most useful thing to do. 20 minute blocks, little and often. Repetition is key. Practice, practice, practice. Distributed practice. It's going to really help you to embed those skills, particularly things like things that are definitely going to come up in any exam. So for computer science, for example, that would be binary to denary conversions. In ICT, skills that would come up would definitely be evaluating uses of software, describing certain technologies that are going to be used, are going to come up in lots and lots of exams. So practicing that is really, really useful. So we looked at this research before in previous videos, but we can see what is the most impactful, what is the highest impact, what should we be doing? Practice testing. So I'm all about that. I'm all about past papers, absolutely. But also we can see at the bottom there, distributed practice, spreading out study over time. So little and often, 20 minute blocks, starting now in August, are really gonna help you in May next year. So what is revision? It's the process you go through to make sure you can recall the information you can need in your exam. It's also making sure you practice and refine the skills and techniques you'll be using in the exam. It should be difficult, uncomfortable, and challenging. If it's not, it's not effective. It's not pushing you hard enough, and it's not really going to be that useful. Think of it like exercise. If it's not a little challenging, it's not doing anything. It should be planned with a clear idea of what you will achieve in each session before you start. So having that plan before you start is really, really useful. Not just sitting down, I'll get the books out, I'll start reading. That's not going to be useful. You might as well not do that. So back to this research conducted by Professor John Dunlovsky, we can see that low impact, summarizing, highlight, underlining, mnemonics. These are all low impact. Um, they may be useful to you, they may help you, but really in the long term, they're not going to have a huge amount of impact. Move down there to more moderate, elaborate interrogation, explain a point of fact, self-explanation, interleave practice, practice testing. Check knowledge, especially using flashcards. One thing I'm going to develop is flashcards. I'll do a video on that at some point about creating flashcards, how we do that. Distributed practice, spreading out study over time. So in your plan, you've planned out one day it's going to be English, the next day it's going to be maths, and then so on a Monday you might do English, on a Tuesday maths, but that is every single week. That is distributed practice. That is little and often and that's what's really going to help you with your revision. So what to do now? Well, if you're halfway through a course, I'd recommend that you take an evaluation of what you do know and what you don't know and download the PLC, Personal Learning Checklist, link in the description and go through it carefully. Pick areas that you're weakest at red. These are going to be your priorities. Focus on improving these. Use knowledge organizers to top up knowledge. Um, knowledge organizers are things that you use to keep. Perhaps you have them printed. They're A3, they're color print them off, put them up for just a quick overview. We're talking about repetition there. Look at them every day. That's really, really going to help. But you need to be focused on specific areas for revision. So all the areas in red are your priority, whereas green are less of a priority. It doesn't mean that 
in August that you shouldn't be going over them again, but they're not a priority. The red areas are things that you do need to go over and do need to be your priority for the future, things that you need to know a bit more. So we look at this, for example, 1.1.3, is something that I really need to focus on. Whereas 1.1.1, I understand, I know it, I can take an exam question on it, I'm, I'm completely securing that knowledge. What about the amber areas then? Well, they come, they come after the red, so they're the kind of lower priority, but still higher than green. Revising the green areas will make you feel good because you understand it and you know you feel good about that, you understand that topic completely but really that's not really gonna help you when it comes to taking an exam. It's gonna be the red areas that are gonna be your focus. So I link to this in the description for both ICT and computer science. And again, one of these for both ICT and computer science, this is a top up, a knowledge organizer. This isn't just for just for revision, this is, also, this is for topping up your knowledge and just keeping that handy when you need that top up. This isn't everything that you need to know. It does go into a bit more detail in the textbooks, for example, and the exam questions and specification. But this is just a brief overview for you to understand what the topics are and what you need to understand. Again, for both ICT and computer science. So good luck. And remember, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Thanks for watching. Please download those resources there for you. I put them there for you. They're in my Dropbox. Please use them. And please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.